Hello everyone, my name is Ken Leib and I am a hydrologist for the U.S. Geological Survey. My current role at the USGS is Acting Director for the Colorado Water Science Center. I'm stationed in Grand Junction. The Water Science Center in Colorado has three field offices, one in Pueblo, one in Grand Junction, and one in Durango and our main office location is in Lakewood, Colorado on the Denver Federal Center. The USGS collaborates with many other federal, state, and local agencies as well as um, nonprofits and stakeholders groups uh, throughout the nation. In Colorado, we regularly work with water quantity and quality issues throughout the state. In Western Colorado, the USGS maintains hundreds of stream flow and water quality monitoring stations annually. These stations include many in the Lower Gunnison and Uncompahgre Valley. Uh, they are used to determine water availability and suitability for multiple uses. As you can see from the first slide, water is only one of the many technical and scientific topics covered by the USGS. For this talk, I'll focus primarily on water issues in the Uncompahgre Basin, but note that there are many facets of the environment that either influence our water system or are influenced by our water system. Here we have some examples of continuous data streams or records that are gathered by the USGS at one of our gauging stations near the mouth of the Uncompahgre River. Some examples of the uh, types of continuous data being collected at this gauge include water temperature in the upper left, stream flow in cubic feet per second on the upper right, turbidity to the lower left, which is a measure of water clarity, and specific conductance, which is a surrogate for the amount of dissolved ions in the water. And this is also sometimes referred to as total dissolved solids or salinity. The USGS, state, and other entities also collect discrete water quality uh, as samples at this gauge. Um, correlations between the discrete water quality samples and the continuous data record are used to inform land managers and scientists of what's in the water column when no discrete sample information is available. And they're also used for modeling purposes. Uh, other basic or more practical uses include hazard awareness, fish habitat conditions, and uh, recreational applications for anglers and boaters, etc. Continuous record and discrete water quality data for all USGS sites can be found at the National Water Information System Mapper. The specific link is given at the top of the slide. The mapper allows you to select using multiple lookup parameters or you can just search using the interactive map as shown. Another useful site for Looking up stream flow conditions is sponsored by the State of Colorado's Division of Water Resources. This site is very useful if you're interested in viewing a map that has both USGS and State of Colorado stream flow gauge information on it. Um, data can be acquired using multiple lookup parameters uh, or the interactive map, much like what was used uh, for the USGS mapper shown previously. The web address for this site uh, is also shown at the top of this slide. So what are some of the main water quality issues USGS deals with in the Uncompahgre Valley? The main water quality issue my office deals with is that of salinity and selenium. Other issues such as legacy mine drainage and mercury also exist, but in the interest of time, uh, we'll focus primarily here on salinity and selenium for this discussion. Salinity, uh, as previously mentioned, is the amount of dissolved solids in the water. Typically, major ions such as sulfate, sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium, etc., are uh, the major players that we encounter. 
collectively these individual ions or water quality constituents are referred to as salinity. Salinity can be problematic for irrigators as well as water treatment facilities. When water gets too saline, it has to be treated or it can't be used. Selenium is a trace element and comprises an extremely small amount of the salinity count I just mentioned. Selenium is an essential element for a vast array of life forms, including humans. However, too much selenium can also be toxic. This is a concern because native fish species in the Uncompahgre, Gunnison, and Colorado rivers can be extremely sensitive to selenium. So where do selen salinity and selenium come from? Uh, they come from the ground. They occur naturally in all geologic formations. But the most notorious for salinity and selenium is the Manco Shale. This formation formed as part of the West Interior Seaway in what is now the state of Colorado, which was previously underwater. When uh, the seaway eventually dried up, uh, what was left was highly concentrated sediments that were high in salinity and selenium. The Manco Shale Formation and soils derived from it cover a large part of the lower Uncompahgre Valley between Montrose and Delta, Colorado. As shown by the geologic cross-section here, the formation is over 5,000 feet thick in some areas, and so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Much of the Manco Shale is irrigated in agricultural and residential areas. The Uncompahgre Valley receives about 9 to 12 inches of rainfall annually. However, irrigated parts of the valley add several more feet of water during the growing season. As seen from the photo, there is a stark contrast between irrigated and unirrigated areas in the lower Uncompahgre Valley. Our conceptual model shows us that irrigation water can seep below the root zone and entrain the in situ salt and selenium that was placed there millions of years ago by the West Interior Seaway. In addition to the seepage below the root zone on irrigated lands, water can also seep from unlined canals, ditches, and ponds, and entrain salt and selenium in the same way. So how do we correct this problem? The best solution to the problem is to become more efficient. The agricultural community in the Uncompahgre Basin has invested millions of dollars improving irrigation and delivery systems. Some ways to do that are to pipe or line canals and ponds, as well as upgrade flood systems to gated pipe or sprinkler infrastructure. So we know these approaches work because we are seeing decreases in salinity and selenium in the water quality data that we collect. Shown in the figures, is the decrease in selenium at the Gunnison River stream flow gauge near Grand Junction over the last 20 years. The decrease shown is due in large part to efforts put forth in the Uncompahgre Basin. In fact, recently the Gunnison River main stem was reclassified by the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment from a water body that threatens aquatic life to one that meets state water quality standards for selenium. That's been one of Colorado's big success stories this year, actually. So regarding drought and water availability in the Uncompahgre River Basin, it looks like stream flow levels in the lower basin are right at normal for this time of year. However, this may be due in large part to diversions from the Gunnison Tunnel for irrigation. Stream flow levels in the upper part of the basin at the USGS stream flow gauge near Uray, Colorado, show we recently dipped into the below normal range this month. Below normal stream flow is defined as being between the 10 and 24th percentile range. If we were near normal, we would be closer to the 50th percentile range. Conditions appear to have been slightly better last year at this time and a few rainfall events helped later in the season, but eventually the site entered the much below normal range in September of 2020. 
So as mentioned on the previous slide, a good way to prepare for drought or water scarcity is to be as efficient with your water as possible. This affects the whole valley in a positive way. For more information on drought preparedness and water use efficiency, you can go to the Colorado State University Tri-River Extension Office, local conservation districts, uh, and also the Natural Resource Conservation Service for more information. Okay, well, that's all I have. Uh, thanks for your time, everyone. Uh, here's my contact information. If you have any questions, you can send me a note and I'll try to answer your question or get you in contact with someone who can. So thanks again uh, for the opportunity to present this information. I hope it's helpful. And a special thanks to the Uncompahgre Valley Watershed Partnership for inviting me to help with this educational event. Bye.